Greetings, and welcome to another lesson with Odin. On this episode, I will be showing you how to make these interesting glyph earrings. These are utilizing the four seed bead shape from backtobead.com. And I thought it would be fun to just make a little strange earring type deal. I don't know, they kind of, they kind of remind me of like fish or like fish streamers. Something like that. And the uh, four seeds actually make a really cool structure. So I kind of just based my pattern around that. Um, I've got another color variation here that I will show you. But uses very few beads and very few types of beads. You can pretty much do whatever you want in terms of the fringe drops. You can use daggers here like I've done. Or you can use other sort of briolettes or other things that you have in your stash. But yes, I would probably consider this an intermediate level tutorial because there's a lot of... The concept and the way to do this is pretty simple. It's just a matter of you need to be a little bit more comfortable with navigating around beat systems, but the basic structure is two parallel strands of beads around in a circle. You kind of just navigate the drops around it too, and it's just... It's simple, but not. So if you're able to get into the headspace real easily of a non-conventional bead shape, then feel free to try this out. For this project, you will need two 8mm rounds, eight 4-seed beads. I got these from backtobead.com. 24 3mm fire polish beads. Four 4mm beads. I'm using bicones in this case, but feel free to use fire polish or some other shape. 10 dagger beads or drops of your choice. Size 11 and size 15 seed beads. Two ear wires. And of course, your needle and thread. We're going to be passing through these beads quite a few times, so a smaller needle is better. And I'm using a mid-tone to heavyweight Nymo. Let us get started. So I have a stop bead on top of my thread, just to make things a little bit easier on myself. Then I'm going to thread on one 4 seed, one size 11 seed bead, one 4 millimeter, and one size 11 seed bead. And I'm going to pull that all the way down. Then I'm going to pass through the adjacent hole to the one that I'm coming from. So my thread's coming out of the right side of the bead. I'm going to just pass through the left side so that our 4 millimeter sticks up on top of the 4 seed. Then I'm going to add on a size 15, size 11, a 3 millimeter fire polish, size 11, size 15, and another 4 seed. And pull that down. Now we're going to need to pay close attention to how we thread on our 4 seed so that everything is oriented correctly. The current row we are working on, on the top and bottom 4 seeds, we're going to work with the front 2 holes. So for this first row, the front 2 holes is what we're going to take up when we create our top and our bottom piece. The side, we're going to use the front right corner for this first row. The next row, we're going to use the back left corner, and that leaves two holes free to add our strand here. So for this first round, make sure that your top and bottom comes to the front, and that your side we're going to use the right front. So you can see my threads coming out of the right front for this first side. And on my top section, the two front holes are occupied, leaving the back two holes free. The next section we're going to add is going to lead into the bottom of our earring. So I've added on another size 15, 11, 3 millimeter, 11, and size 15, and a 4 seed. Now, this is the left side of the earring, so I'm coming out of the front left side of the 4 seed. Then I'm going to add one more size 11 seed bead and pass immediately up the front right hole of the same 4 seed. So now we've started to form half of our earring here. Next I'm going to add another size 15, size 11, 3 millimeters, size 11, size 15, and a 4 seed. And this one I'm going to take the leftmost front corner instead of the right, because this is going to be one of our sides. So that when we lay it down, that thread is coming out the frontmost hole, and we have our two holes on the side free. I'm going to add my last set of size 15, 11, 3 millimeter, 11, and 15. I'm going to push my tail end around, 
and pass up through the front right hole of our first four seed and the size 11 seed bead on top so that we form the start of our loop. Then I'm going to pass through my four millimeter back down the next size 11 and down the four seed and then reinforce these beads once more by passing through everything again. When you reach the opposite end where your tail end is resting, go ahead and pull out your stop bead and tie an overhand knot with your tail end and your working threads. Then go back up the four seed through the size 11 and through the four millimeter. Then we're going to start working on the back row. So I've added on one size 11 seed bead, and I'm going to pass through the back left hole on that 4 seed. Since my thread is coming from the left, we're just going to pass it through there. And that'll be the third bead in our little support for that 4 millimeter bead. I'm going to add another set, size 15, 11, 3 millimeter, size 11, and 15. Then we're going to pass through the back hole of the 4 seed. This will be the hole that is opposite where our previous chain is coming out of right here. So you see I have two chains coming out of the same side of the bead and I have my two outer holes so that I can add my fringe later. I'm going to add another bead set and then pass through the back hole on the bottom. This will be opposite where our little size 11 seed bead here is. And so we still have our two rows parallel to each other and coming out of the back. I'm going to then start my center fringe by adding on two size 11s, a size 15, a 4 millimeter, size 15, two size 11s, my dagger, and two size 11s. Once I've passed that down, I'm going to go back through the size 15, the 4 millimeter, and the next size 15 to start my drop section like that. I'm going to add on two more size 11 seed beads and pass through the next hole over on our 4 seed. This will be a hole that we've never gone through before, so that our drop hangs from two behind the single size 11 seed bead in the front. Continue with another bead set and thread through the back hole that is parallel on the 4 seed, so that we continue our pattern and we have our two holes free for our fringe drop on the other side. Add on our last bead set and pass through the empty hole on the top, the one that doesn't have a size 11 seed bead on it yet. I'm going to add my size 11 seed bead and pass through the 4 millimeter bead again. We will finish adding our supports on all four corners of that 4 seed. Now I'm going to travel back down on the back row and reinforce all of those beads by passing through everything once more, including the fringe drop down here. Now, since my tail is really annoying me, I'm going to get rid of it. And to do that, I'm going to turn it into a bale. So from where I'm starting from, in between the size 15 and the 4 seed, I'm going to pass through the 4 seed and the size 11 seed bead above, then through the 4 millimeter bead. I'm going to add six size 11 seed beads. You can also use size 15 seed beads. I just like the color combination I have now. So I'm using size 11. Then I'm going to pass back through the four millimeter beads so that I form a pico. Then I'm going to reinforce that once or twice and then end my thread. Now I'm going to continue by having my working thread coming out of the four millimeter bead. Now I'm going to go down using the size 11 seed bead the front forward hole of the 4 seed through the first section and through the 4 seed again. So my thread is coming out of the 4 seed here. I'm going to pass up the same 4 seed but using one of the empty holes that is across the way from where I'm starting from. I'm going to add one size 11 seed bead and pass down the next empty hole on the 4 seed. I'm going to add my beads for my next drop by adding on a size 11, size 15, 3 millimeter, size 15, two size 11s, my dagger, and two size 11s. I'm going to pass that down. Then I'm going to pass through the size 15, the 3 millimeter, and the size 15, so that it cinches up like that. I'm going to add one size 11 C bead and pass through the opposite hole from where we've started from, so that we've used our two holes that were free to take up with this fringe drop. Then I'm going to pass through the size 11 seed bead here and pass through all of these beads once more to reinforce the drop. Now I'm coming through the four seed from the front corner here. All I'm going to do is move over diagonally 
so that I end up going through the four seed so that we end up back going around the earring and that we end up on the side that only has the single seed bead in the front. The thread isn't going to show that much, so don't really worry about appearances here. Then I'm going to continue my path down until I'm at the hole next to the single size 11 seed bead. So I'm going to add another fringe drop by adding one size 11, one size 15, a 3 millimeter size 15, two size 11s, a dagger, and two size 11s. Then I'm going to pass through the size 15, 3 millimeter size 15, and the topmost size 11 bead, and move up through the four seed where we started from. I'm going to then add two size 15s, a size 11, my 8 millimeter round, size 11 and two size 15s, pull it down, then since my thread is coming out of the right side on this bead, I'm going to travel all the way up to the right side of the top four seed, just the four seed. We're not picking up any of the seed beads on the side here, so that we push our bead in the center. I'm going to then go up and around size 11, the four millimeter, the size 11, then down the left side of the four seed in the same facing as where we started from. We started here, we want to go here. I'm going to then add on two size 15 seed beads, dig down into the center, and pick up the size 11, the 8 millimeter, and the size 11. I'm going to add two more size 15 seed beads, then we're going to pass through the four seed on the left side. This is opposite where we don't have a drop yet. Add on the beads for your other fringe piece. Pick up the size 15, 3 millimeter size 15, and top size 11. Pass back through the four seed at the same hole that you started from to add your second fringe drop. Then we're going to pass up and down the center pearl again so that we reinforce the two drops. So we're going to go up, over, down. Then you're going to go down one of the fringe drops, up, through, down, and reinforce the second fringe drop. So once you've reinforced these once more, we're going to travel up through the 8mm again and go through the 11 and end up at the 4mm bead so that we can pass through the appropriate ways and get to the opposite free side. We're doing it this way because it works better going down and making your drop downward instead of going up and trying to pass through the beads once more. You can do it, you just might end up with a little bit more thread showing than you like, and the means of doing it isn't exactly the same as doing it from the top. So once we've made our way back down, we're just gonna pass up once more, add our single size 11 seed bead, then add our fringe drop, reinforce the fringe drop, and then end your thread. Then after that, you're going to attach your ear wire on the top of the bale here, and you're good to go. And then you will have your finished earrings. Now, don't get too caught up on following everything exactly. As long as you have the same results, then you're fine. The four seeds are pretty forgiving, and in this kind of pattern, any loose threads that you might have in order to get to the correct path won't be seen very much. So... Just remember, you want two parallel strands with two on the side and then two in the front, two in the back. Just kind of remember that as kind of a mnemonic to help yourself, I guess. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you guys try some out yourself. Four seeds are really fun and really dynamic and add some interesting challenge to your skill set. Let me know if you made them yourself, and please feel free to share with us at our group at Creations from Lessons with Odin. There's a lot of cool people there, and I'd love to see your colorways with this, because I always love to see a piece can be so interesting in a bunch of different colors, and I kind of want to see what other people's interpretations of color play is. So, that will do it from me. Be sure to like up this video, and subscribe if you want to see more bullshit from me. Check out my other jewelry shenanigans up on this channel. Check out my other shenanigans, because I do just more than jewelry here. And if you're so inclined, check out my sci-fi blog. There are links in the description below of all pertinent realms. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and of course, if there's anything I need to be trying out right now, feel free to let me know down below, and I will see you next time.